The business of the journalist is to destroy truth, to lie outright, to pervert, to vilify, to fawn at the feet of the mammon, and to sell his country and his race for his daily bread. We are the tools and vassals of rich men behind the scenes. We are the jumping jacks. They pull the strings and we dance. Our talents, our possibilities and our lives are all the property of other men. We are intellectual prostitutes. And that was said by John Swinton, who was a journalist for the New York Sun in 1880. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maxwell Egan. It's a pleasure to be with you again, and I will be your host for the next hour. Now, in the social and political climate of the 21st century, humanity is truly facing some very great challenges many of them made all the more difficult due to the fact that they are challenges that go mostly unnoticed by the vast majority of human beings. The vast majority of people in the world today only perceive the world the way it appears to them on the surface. However, the real truth is that the world we live in today is actually a very different beast to that which most people perceive it to be. Because just below the surface of everyday life, beneath the social and political distractions of the reality that is offered to the masses via their television set, there exists another world. The world that most people see on the surface is simply a facade. It's an illusionary reality where nothing is what it seems. It's a world where our social system is designed to foster division, our education system is designed to conceal knowledge. Our health system is designed to create sickness. Our financial system is designed to steal wealth. Our community is designed to create disunity. And our very civilization is itself wholly uncivilized. We live in a world where in fact 2% of the population controls 98% of the global resources while the other 98% of the people are left to compete against each other in order to gain some small fraction of the other 2% that is left of them in order to support their lives and support their families. In fact, the world that we live in today is so disjointed and so out of balance that the most amazing part of all is that there are actually people out there who just cannot seem to see it. But this is because the systems of control that have been put in place to blind people to the true realities of our world have been very cleverly and very meticulously constructed. Our education system, for example, which is designed not to educate but simply to indoctrinate, it's more of an indoctrination system. Critical thinking is virtually outlawed. Students are trained to simply regurgitate what is in books. There's very little investigation into these facts and those who can regurgitate books on command and the more word for word the better, then these are the ones who are considered to be successful and these are the ones who go on to populate our legal systems and our political systems and those who hold the social infrastructure together. And all of these people have been indoctrinated into thinking in a certain way. If you are a critical thinker, if you do think outside the box, if you are artistic, if you are creative, then all of those emotions get repressed in school, you're considered a misfit, and you simply don't make the grade. And so you are never really able to obtain any type of position in life where you might be someone who will be able to rock the boat or affect the system in a manner that would bring about positive change. So it's a very clever system of indoctrination that we've got here. And then there's the social system, and of course the fact that most ordinary people who then go out into the world, the ones who don't become leaders and simply go out into the world. They're always kept in a position where they have to pay to be alive for every moment that they're alive. They have to pay to live in the country that they were born in, which is a completely ridiculous concept in itself. But they're all trained to think that this is normal. Well, yes, of course, you have to work. If you don't work, you never get anywhere. But why do you have to work, folks? Why do you have to work and collect paper in order to pay to live in the country you were born in. I mean, it doesn't really make a great deal of sense, but people just think it's this natural thing. Oh, you have to work. Well, I can't understand that. 
Unless you're working building your house or working in the garden growing your own food or hunting or doing whatever it is that you keep your family alive with to sustain yourself, then why do you have to work? I mean, sure, if people want to work, if they want to invent things, if they want to grow things, if they want to do things, if they want to work with other people, building structures or or whatever, I mean, sure, do it. Do whatever you want to do. But you shouldn't be in a position where you have to. Nobody in society, nobody in the world should be in a position where if they don't work and collect paper, then they can't live. They have no home, they have no food, they have no shelter, they have no land, they have nothing if they do not work to collect paper. It's ridiculous, folks. It's absolutely ridiculous. Every person that's born on the planet should be given at least something. They should be given a block of land somewhere with which to grow their garden, grow their food. And even if it's not arable land, folks, that's not a problem. We have the technology to turn all land into arable land. And as I've pointed out to people in some of my films, you could actually give everybody a quarter acre block of land and fit them in an area less than the size of Australia. And each person would have a quarter acre block, folks. They could all put in permaculture gardens and grow more than their own supply of food and be free to live their lives. You can grow enough food on a quarter acre block to feed a large number of people, folks. 